My R5 and RF 100-500 lens has great IBIS, so why have I bought a gimbal head? Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and you're watching Rumour Has It. Please subscribe for camera news, rumour and informed opinion. It's free to subscribe and it helps the channel grow. Although I'm hugely impressed with my R5 and the RF100-500 combination, in this video I'll cover five key areas where the gimbal brings benefit before going on to talk about tripod choice, assembly of the gimbal, key information that appears to be missed by many reviewers, at least I've not seen it in the research I've done, and then we'll cover camouflage, an inexpensive but effective way to get good results. This is all listed in the chapters in the description to make it easy to find. So firstly, let's look at the five reasons to add a gimbal to my setup. Reason 1. Motion blur in the subject. With those small apertures on the more affordable RF glass like the 600 and 800mm f11, and also on the RF 100-500 with the extender, which can give you f10, or higher with the 2 times extender. It could be a battle with the shutter speed and ISO to get the shot, and motion blur is often the enemy when trying to keep it below 8000 ISO like I try to do. Reason 2. Motion blur in your body movements. Motion blur can be caused by your own body movement as much as by the subject movement. I often find some shots exhibit motion blur which is purely down to me and my excitement, or some would say inexperience. Imagine head and shoulders and hips and arms flailing widely. Sadly, that's me. Reason 3. Weight relief. Especially with longer lenses, it's a relief not to hold the lens and camera and to have a weightless freedom of movement that a gimbal gives you. That takes us to reason 4 long periods of waiting. In wildlife photography, patience is the key, and the less movement you make, the better chance of getting a shot. So leaving the gimbal at a fixed position and waiting for the subject to arrive often gives you a better shot, by allowing you to compose the shot in advance. And that brings us to reason 5. Time saving. With the camera always at the ready, and in position, Coupled with a fast start-up time from sleep to wake, the R5 wakes instantly, allowing you to respond without having to stay at the ready all the time. The camera is off at the moment. What do you think? Are there other reasons I should have covered? Or perhaps you know a better way of addressing the problems I mentioned, particularly my own stability? Let me know in the comments below. Now on to the gimbal video I mentioned, and check out those dance moves coming up. Hi again. So here we have um, a Manfrotto 55 mm 4 uh, I'd say this tripod is up to the job. Um, it's quite sturdy. Um, thing to be aware of though when you're choosing a tripod is uh, be aware that normally this is going to be set up at eye level. And that's usually as high as most tripods will go. And um, when they get there, uh, the bottom legs tend to be a bit uh, spindly, shall we say. And uh, what that can do is it can lead to instability in the tripod. So I tried to choose one that's got uh, strong legs all the way down. Uh, this particular tripod is carbon fibre. And whilst it looks a bit spindly, it's actually quite strong and uh, and stable. So we're going to use this for today's demonstration. Currently it's set up with a pistol grip uh, ball head, which, to be honest, is, isn't much good, particularly for wildlife photography, because it constantly locks in position, so you're always on the pistol grip, and that's not necessarily the best way at all handling it. So we're going to take that off. Uh, technically you should have a C-spanner to do this. Uh, I don't happen to have one. 
it just so happens I've got a screwdriver bit that is the perfect fit for the hole. So just give that a quick tug and off it comes. So we'll spin this off. So now we're going to fit the, the gimbal head. And today we've got the mobile GH700. Uh, I chose this gimbal head for a number of reasons. It has a good reputation and also it's quite a competitive price. Uh, it happened to be on special offer at the time. So I got a very good deal on this. Got the whole thing for £80. The gimbal head comes with a 3 8 thread on the bottom. And that 3 8 thread has an adapter, which you can take it down to quarter inch thread if you prefer. Now, I'm really not sure why you would want that, because the majority of tripods with a quarter inch head are going to be quite flimsy and not likely to support this. However, we'll fit this today. This screw here in the, at the base should be tight when you're fitting it. It stops it rotating, which allows you to spin the head on easier. I'll just do that. Right. Now, in the absence of a sea washer, I'll just use my screwdriver trick again and find the hole. So I'll stick that in and just give it that extra bit of tightening. Now, because this tripod has locking screws in the bottom, I'll just tighten them at the moment. And that's going to give some extra stability to the, to the head. I'm going to lock that off now. Listen that, and that head now spins quite freely, and it's it's very smooth actually. So you can see the head spins freely there. I think to bear in mind is this thread here, locking thread, is completely different from this one. And this is a problem I find. And I've seen it on a couple of videos I've watched uh, where people have demonstrated tripods, and that, particularly this mobile one. This is not a thread that you turn to tighten and slacken off to loosen in a traditional way. What's in here is a thrust bearing, and that thrust bearing just depends on pressure. Now, if you over tighten that, you'll have a devil of a job getting it off. And I've actually seen on some uh, feedback people have given to the gimbal head suppliers is that it's impossible to loosen and they think it's faulty. Basically, they're using it wrong. It's a thrust washer and if you loosen it off, the arm swings. If you tighten it up, the arm locks, but don't over tighten it because if you do, you'll find it almost impossible to release. What you're looking to do, and we'll find this later, is just adjust it, just very light fingertip tightness, so that they're still, you're still able to move it, but it takes out any looseness. Now we're going to fit the base. The base is this uh, single piece construction and it slides in from the top. There's a backstop on the end there 
it prevents that going right off the bottom. That's added security for your camera and lens if you've got it on it and you loosen this. There's no chance that's just going to drop to the and come off the bottom of the mount. You can see that operation. If, it, if this is loose, you can see the arm will move. And you're looking to tighten that thrust bearing just enough to take that rock out, but still leave you the ability to move it. I'll leave that there at the moment and I'll get the lens. So the Canon R5 with the 100 to 500 lens here. And I'll just fit that in. And we'll look to get some balance. So if I loosen this off, you'll see that the currently yeah, that's camera heavy. So we want to move it along a little bit. Loosen that and we'll slide the lens along. And uh, tighten that up again. And it's still camera heavy. So we'll loosen that again. And we'll keep doing this until we get to the point where we have balance. If you go too far, you'll become lens heavy. But as you can see, so that's coming down almost to the level there. I would say that's level. We now want to alter it for vertical height. And that's done by this screw here. If I loosen that, we're looking to move the cradle up until the lens, the axis of this arm is on the center line of the lens. Listen to that again, and just set the tension. And you'll see now that the lens and body are perfectly balanced. And you can rotate and move this into any place. Uh, and it will maintain that. It's fairly critical that you get that balance correct because if it's not, you might get a slow creep over time and you don't want that either. Now, a possible solution, if you find that your tripod isn't particularly stable, is to not to extend the very bottom leg because that's usually the weakest and less stable leg. If you have a problem then, you can always use it seated. And that's something that I, I do. I have got a little camping chair that I use. I use the tripod on a lower setting and there's a lot more rigidity in the tripod then. When you're setting the tripod up, most tripods will have a bubble level in them. And you're looking to get that pretty well aligned. It's more critical if you're planning to use this for video work and you want to do a, a pan. Less critical if you're just using this for bird photography and birds in flight. Now the main benefit of using a gimbal head is when you're, although this is, the lens is fairly light in the whole setup, the R5 and the 100 to 500 lens is fairly light combination. What I find is when I'm out in the field using it is that in the excitement and you see a bird and usually this is a pretty, a pretty instant reaction uh, to get onto some birds in flight. But when you're doing that, there's a lot of movement in your body. You're moving in your hips, you're moving in your shoulders, your head, your arms, and even potentially the positioning of your feet. All of that takes a lot to do to control and to keep the bird in, uh, on the sensor. If you're using a tripod like this with a gimbal head, it takes a lot of that out of the equation. The other key benefit is if you're in the field and there's a favourite post or branch where you know that birds typically like to sit, you can train it on that branch or on that post and just leave it there. When the bird returns to that post or anything, you run it straight away. And you can use the app on your phone, the Canon app on your phone, to trigger it remotely. And that takes you out of the equation and it also means that there's less chance of scaring the bird.
Oh, so you can use this for if you've got a feeding point and you've preceded a, a feeding area for the birds that you're expecting to arrive. You can also uh, train it on a nest, providing you've got the necessary permissions. Uh, you have to make sure that you're abiding by the law when you're when you're trying to photograph a bird in the nest. Now, if you're wondering about the camouflage that I've got on my lens or in part of uh, my lens, what I've used here is crepe bandages. And you can buy these in all sorts of colours, but you can also get them crucially in camouflage. Now, it's a very useful thing. It's a sort of self-amalgamating thing. It will stick together. And I cut this in strips and I put it around the lens. That means that you can separate sections where you've still got movement and freedom to adjust the focus, for instance. Um, I've got some extra rolls of it so that I can actually roll and bind the gimbal head. Uh, it's useful stuff. Something that you, to bear in mind when you're using it is that it takes up the shape and the form. So where you've got a, a contoured pattern like this, it gives you a much closer and tighter fit. Uh, when you finish binding it, or when you're doing a section, you can put a, a single strip of double-sided tape between the layers just at the end where it joins and that that gives it a more secure fitting and less likely to come loose in the field and it's less affected by weather. So a little double side a little strip of double-sided tape on the end of it gives it a more semi-permanent fix. Now that means that you can remove the bandages at any time and it's easy to put them back. You might just need to put another bit of double-sided tape on it. But it's a very easy and useful method and cheap method uh, to camouflage your lens and your tripod and your gimbal arm. You can just wind it around them all. And I'm going to be doing that. Now the plan is to have that done by the time we go on a short field trip. And I'll show you the setup in the field. That's coming up next. And here's the finished camouflage. As you can see, it's quite effective. And the handling's also good. It's nice and tactile feel. And it improves the grip. And it took less than three whole reels to do this. I also did some final adjustments to the, to the lens, uh, or to the gimbal head, should I say, to make it much easier to move. So it's just a, like one touch movement. Uh, one thing I did do was I uh, added some uh, lithium grease into this joint here and also a little bit in here and that's basically made this a very light touch now so it's easily moved with one finger and the whole head spins again with one finger so it's very light very smooth and easy if you've got a relative who's uh, in the medical trade <laughs> and is skilled in wrapping a bandage, I'm sure they'd make a better job of it than I did. But to be honest, I'm quite happy with it. I think it's covered the majority of the auto lens and the tripod and the gimbal arm, and it works quite well. As I said, it took less than three whole reels to do this. And considering you can buy a pack of five for 9 99 that's UK pounds. I think it's well worth the money. What do you think? Thanks for watching, Rumor Has It. I hope you found this useful. Please click the subscribe button below as it really helps the channel grow. And for my part, I'll continue to bring you some camera news, rumor, and informed opinion.